It all started like a fun adventure, a chance to earn a quick buck and to see the world. Little did these test pilots know they got into a situation so sticky they would have to hijack a plane to get out of. You are now only They were flying planes that were in no condition to be flown. They transported weapons and smuggled people. It didn't end well for test pilot Igor Gutkov. When he returned from one of his flights to Africa, he died from tropical malaria. His flight partner Alexander Garnaev says they wish they had known what they were getting into. It only occurred to us later how dangerous our job was. Africa is now the largest illegal job market for the CIS pilots. They crash, go missing or even commit suicide. Zhukovsky Cemetery is a place for heroes. Igor Gutkov lays here next to his father, also a test pilot, but it is hard to find anyone else here who became a victim of his African adventures buried here. Among the pilots, flying the murky African trade route isn't well respected. No contracts, no insurance, no guarantees. Igor and Alexander realized they had reached the point of no return after they were called to make an urgent delivery to Luanda, Angola. We landed in Tel Aviv and were shown a vast amount of boxes. When we were told we had to transport weapons, we were outraged. But we were threatened with breach of contract and jail. We flew a sideline route, dangerously overloaded, and landed in Luanda on the last drops of fuel. Breaking the rules and pushing their luck became their trade. But it was flying the archaic Aleutians and Antonovs, some left over from Soviet times and mostly smuggled from Russia, that proved to be the most dangerous. One man who experienced one of these flights over war-torn Angola is Luis Graham Yo. We knew that these weren't official pilots. Uh, we were told they were Ukrainian. The plane we were flying in was a very old Antonov, uh, the first time you know, the other journalists and I saw it, we got a bit of a shock. It was covered with burn marks. The tires were almost completely bald to the extent that you thought they'd burst at any moment, uh, especially on landing. And also we were landing on, you know, very small land and landing strips in the middle of the African bush. Lack of maintenance of these planes is the number one cause of catastrophes like this. A cargo plane crashed two weeks ago in the Democratic Republic of Congo, killing all on board including five Russian and Ukrainian pilots. Close to 200 pilots from the CIS now legally work under contracts in Congo alone. And that is just the tip of the iceberg, and most of them get cash in hand. Our authorities have no control over the pilots working there. They are on their own, accepting the contracts and benefits or the lack of them. We are aware of the grey schemes going on in Africa, but some pilots are willing to take the risk. Pilots from the Soviet Union flooded foreign airlines in the early 90s as the USSR and its Air Force fell apart. Jobless, many of them considered themselves lucky if they managed to get an African gig. But quitting a job like this isn't easy. Alexander and his crew reported their flight manager to the police and hijacked their plane across the globe, Johannesburg, Moscow. Alexander wouldn't talk much about his stories in Africa. He still has many friends and former partners locked in their tiny cabins, some flying for money, some at a gunpoint. And most think there is no way out. The pilots are romantics. Everyone thinks it won't happen to me. It's hard to see the news on TV about our planes and our crews crashing in Africa. I want to tell them to come back. Things changed and there is plenty of work here in Russia. Stop gambling with your life and come home. Anastasia Hedolina, Russia Today, Moscow.